Timothy Ray Jones, J O N E S. Mr. John, I can't show you some pictures of the one. Show during. If you just tell me, did you recognize them? these ones? These are these first few are already in evidence. That's mm -hmm. the exhibit 252, 251, 140, and 142. And then uh, these are the ones that I would all as well use to mark for identification purposes. This is 326, 327, 328. 332, 236, 238, 242, 247, 245, and 246. Are these all pictures that you recognize family photos? Yes, sir. I'd just like to show some of these pictures. That list that I um, read off your arm, we would offer into your evidence that the state has seen the photographs. Oh, yeah. I don't know all the numbers, but you call them, call the numbers out, and I'm going to write them down. But those that you just showed him, that the state will be admitted without objection. And I'll yes, on a number by number basis. Okay. Um, and Mr. Jones, if you will just sort of help, uh, help me sort of just tell the jury who these people are in the period of time that was picture was taken and what was going on in your lives at that point. Is that all right with you? Do my best. This is um, 326. Tell us uh, who's that? That's my ex-wife, Cindy Granado, Timmy's mother. All right. And do you remember about when that picture would have been taken? It was pretty much when I first met her. So when we had six. 15, 16, 16. You're saying that's how old you were then? I was 16. She was 16. She was 16 as well. And this next picture is 327. Is that her as well? Yes. It's, I believe it's about 18. Okay. And where'd y'all meet? And uh, a friend of mine introduced me in uh, Round Lake, Illinois. How long did you know each other before, before y'all got pregnant with, with Tim? Year and a half, maybe? Year. And jury's seen this picture. This is 140. And who's that? It's me and Timmy when he was born. Which was when? December 23rd or 22nd. 1981? Mm hmm Where'd y'all, where were you living at that point? We were staying in my mother's basement. In? Oh, Grove, Illinois. Aldrin Trail, I believe. How about that one? It's Cindy and Timmy. Um, right there again, 19, seven, or 18, you know, around 18 and a half, 19. I think we talked to the jury before, but there was changes that you saw in Cindy before, or while she was pregnant with Tim Jr. and after he was born. Yeah, I mean, she was just... Uh, she just do crazy things like cut up her clothes and then you know, sit in the corner. I mean, she just seemed like she was losing her mind. Yes, sir. And, I don't, and we don't have to go back into it again, but she eventually, I think, left you and Tim Jr. Yes. Or I guess she left with Tim Jr. for a while. Yes. But did you end up getting custody of Tim? In the long run, yes. And who then becomes his sort of family after Cynthia leaves? Uh, we you know my, my mother and father and sisters. And who are they again? Elaine and Bernadine, Roberta and Larry. Okay. Little and Larry was like his little brother. <laughs> and wh what were you doing for work during that period of time when Tim was little? I was a tool and die maker. Say again? Tool and die maker. Okay. In Illinois? Yes. This is 142. Where where is that taken? I want to say this is in Itasca. It's Itasca, Illinois. Okay. And uh, I was working for Illinois Tool Works at the time. Were you living with your mom and, and Larry? No, this was in, uh, it was, I want to say it's me and Timmy. Just the two of you? 
Yeah, I, I, I believe so. How about this? This is three twenty-eight. What y'all doing there? Um, we're going to golf balls. I'm trying to wonder where, exactly where is that. I think it's over by. Uh, I'm not sure. I can't tell. But I, I used to go. I'd go to old schools or wherever they had a big field, and we'd hit golf balls. Me and Timmy. What other kind of stuff? Did you, didn't you go bowling there? I do. You know, whatever you want to do: bowling, golf, football, baseball. You know, he turned eventually like wrestling and gymnastics more. And is this a time in his life when we all spent significant time together? Yes. Uh, that's 238. That's, little, that's Timmy. Little Timmy, I call him. Is that just a, a school picture? I believe so. I want to say um, East Middle School and... Uh, yeah, it's got to be the middle school, not that middle school. Um, and how, how was he? Was he interested in school back in those days? Oh yeah, he loved school. He just, and he excelled. So, I mean, he was a good. He was a good kid. I mean, what kind of stuff did he like most? Most in school? Math. Yeah. Is that why you ended up getting him a computer? Yeah. Yep. Um, oh, real quick. 326, 327, 328 are admitted without objection. I believe 140, 142 are already in. If not, they're in now. 140's now in. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Jones, tell us about um, what your grandchildren, Mary, Eli, and Tom, Gabe, and Lane, meant to you. I know I don't, I don't think you and Julie ever had the chance to meet Lane. No, unfortunately, we didn't. But tell us, tell the jury about what 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 you call them the babies, right? Huh. What did the babies mean to you and your family's life? Well, they meant everything to me. I mean, they were. I was the man. Say again. I was the man, you know, Peppa. That's what they called you. Yep. And what they called Julie, your wife. Called Grandma. The summer of uh, 2012. Where, where, where they live? You talking about when they were getting Timmy and them were splitting up? Yeah, when, when the, in, it was the summer of 2012 that they lived with you in Mississippi, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't know it was that far away, but yeah. Okay. And what, they, what was one of the things that you made at your house for them for that summer? I made all kinds of things for them. <laughs> I mean, I built a pool for them, you know, because none of them knew how to swim, so I want to teach them how to swim, so we put in a pool. Matter of fact, my son helped me. I'm going to show you some pictures. I think around that time, you just tell us who's in the picture. This is 247, you're on. That's me and the time. Was that a pretty much a, a normal thing for you all that, that summer every day? Yeah. And you said none of the babies could swim at that point? No, that's why you see floaties on them. And that's 246. That's who? That's Mira. That's this is 245. That's Natan, Eli, and my nephew. Which what nephew is that? Uh, not uh, Bentley, but um, oh, I can't think of his name off the top. That's okay. He was just here visiting too. He'd be mad at me. <laughs> oh, he probably is going to be mad at me. You see this, can he? <laughs> was this uh, was it, was your house a, a gathering place for lots of family around this time? Yes. And was it, were, the, were the babies part of the reason why people wanted to come around? Well, we was, I mean, even even before, you know, they moved away, they, they, like I said, they were there in the house every weekend. So, yeah, it was always 
It was always, you know, about the kids. And before that, um, before the summer that they lived with you, they would they would spend time there sometime. His name was Blake, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, Blake. Um, the babies would spend time at your house before they actually lived there sometimes, right? When they lived in Mississippi. Yeah, I mean, while Timmy was in Mississippi State, they were at our house every weekend. I'm going to show you. This is 332. To tell us, got one of those times? Yes, sir. Who's in that picture? It's Eli, Mira, um, me, Gabriel. No, it ain't Gabriel, is it? No. Oh, that's no, Natan. And uh, Amber. Is that at your house in Mississippi? Yes, sir. And is cooking out something that y'all did regularly when they were there? Yeah, my wife don't cook. <laughs> Speaking of your I'm wife. I'm the chef. <laughs> 242. Who's in that picture? My wife, Natan, and me. I think he had a balloon. Yeah. Mr. Jones, I'm going to show you a. Uh, got to get a mark. I'm sorry. I've already viewed that one time. Is that about one minute video? I don't know. I don't know. Some more in quality of the pictures, so I'll admit it. 361. If I remember right, it's about a minute and 10 seconds. I seen Jackie and heard Amber. I'm sure we're probably all out there. And tell, tell us who Jackie. And Eli, I'm sorry. Jackie's my daughter. Da your stepdaughter. My daughter. Right. Yes. Um, and tell us about uh, Jackie's involvement in the baby's lives. <clears throat> she was basically like a little second mom to him. You know, especially that summer, she was well, she was the mom to him. They even they took a vacation, went up north, and we went ahead and 
let Jackie watch him for the summer. It was the summer before she was going off to college. And she said that she would like to help and she keep an eye on him. So. so did she sort of volunteer for that job? Basically? Yeah, yes. But she, she lived there, right? Yes. And these were, um, I mean, she interacted with them like she was babysitting or like they were? <laughs> like they were her own kids. They even made comments that when they were up north in my cousin's Paul's house, Paul said, you think they were married? <laughs> Where'd they all sleep at your house at some time? Oh, I have, you know, three bedrooms, so we had plenty of room. Did they like sleeping? In but they would all sleep with, you know, me and Grandma. And there was some, some, would they sometimes sleep with Jackie too? Jackie, you know, I mean, wherever they wanted to sleep. Right. Usually we were just trying to run them down so they'd go to sleep. I mean, there were a bunch, you know, handful. Um, I'm going to show you what's, this is 251, that about around that summer as well, It is. maybe? Yes. Pool. Is the pool still at your house? No, I took it down. Why? I just couldn't have it up. Because the matter too much. I know this is brutal for you. I'm not trying to hurt you. That's right. But I want you to tell the jury what it's been like to lose the baby. <laughs> Live in hell. I don't know how to, you know how to explain it. <clears throat> it just changed my whole world, you know. Don't sleep. It's just <laughs> it's, it's really it's been six years for me because you know I. You know, and then the, the no, I didn't get to beat you know, Elaine. Yes, sir. Tough. <laughs> Excuse me. When uh, <clears throat> you told the jury already when Timmy was arrested, you got a call from the Smith County Sheriff's Department. You went down there as quickly as you possibly could. Right? Yes, sir. Yes. And I, I know the jury knows this, and I'm not going to want to revisit like blow by blow, but what was your purpose in going down there when you went and they asked you to come? To see what was going on, when, what, what, why to me was there with no children, you know, why we didn't know where they were. And did you want to find the babies desperately? More than anything. Did you do everything that law enforcement asked of you? Yes. Did they even have to ask you to help? No. Your, the main people you that you interacted with there that you were trying to help was the under sheriff under sheriff Patterson, right? Yes. And then Sheriff Crumpton. Yes. I think uh, special special agent Johnson, I think, right? Yes. The decision to help them at that time because you wanted Timmy to tell them what happened, right? Yes, I did. And. You stand by your decision to help them. I do. Do you regret your decision to help them in any way? No, I don't. Are you grateful to those men in Mississippi for what they did? And from South Carolina, Mr. Creech as well. And various people have come to you since that time and asked you for your help, right? They have. And that includes people from the defense and from the prosecution. Yes. Have you ever told anybody no? No. Did you talk to Dr. Frierson when he was evaluating you? Anybody want to talk to me? And you've talked to 
Mr. Hubbard and people from his office on a couple of occasions? Yes, I met Mr. Hubbard a couple times. Once here and once at your house, right? Yes. And your, your decision to cooperate with everybody that's asked for your help, you regret that or you stand by it? I stand by it. the babies personally on well, you on me yeah well I just I take I, I, I feel more responsible than anyone <laughs> I, I mean what do you ask them exactly what did you do to memorialize the babies on you on oh oh family? oh I, I, I got my back tattooed I'm gonna ask permission from Mr. Jones will be able to get down and show the jury the tattoos of the babies. You can step down, Mr. Jones. This is a uh, mirror up here on the upper left, right? It looks like she's holding a puppy. And are these all from pictures that you had of the baby? Yes. And then Elaine in the middle. And then I think Gabe just to the right of Elaine. Eli over here. And then there, the Tons in the middle. And then Who's to the left of the town? Brother. Speak up just a moment. My brother Larry. Larry. And is he the one that you told us died in the motorcycle accident? Yes. And then to to the right of the town, who's that? My sister Larry. She's the one that died of cancer, let's say. Yes. And when did you when did you first start getting these tattoos? Uh, just a few months after this happened. Maybe going back to have them worked on again and again. I know. Now it's a little harder. Yeah, still got more to do. Thanks. Thanks a little while. Yes, sir. Do you want him to be put to death? No, sir. I don't, uh, I, I love him so much. I don't want to, I don't want to hurt no more. I mean, I've hurt enough. I mean, it's destroyed my family. So no, no, I don't. Do you struggle with, uh, guilt? Every day. And I want you to know that I'm not suggesting that I know. You, but oh, it's, for the babies? Yes, and my, and my son, for that matter. I mean, it's more for the babies, though.
think that was already in. Ken, 361 was a video. You admitted that. Right. And then there's 332. So it's all in for not 332. Right. I've got it right here, and I'll the next file. Thank you, ma'am. This is, uh, Mr. Jones, this is 252. I think the jury's seen this before. Yes, sir. This is me and Timmy when uh, the separation was happening that year. Just going to show you, Mr. Jones, what's been marked as 329. Just ask you if you recognize that. I do. That picture of the tattoos on your back of the jersey you saw. Yes, sir. 329. Yes, sir. I'm offering the evidence. I don't believe there's a rejection. You wanted more as published, but put it back up there for the um, yes, sir. media. Oh. Okay. She wanted a picture of it. I'm not sure how to get rid of the glare. I'm sorry. Right. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Chair. Um. <laughs> Three twenty-nine today, yeah. Two fifty two, I believe, already was it. <laughs> Mr. Albert. chaos in your house, yes. but I think you've said over and over you did your best to make sure your son knew all the time you loved him. I did. You would even tell him you loved him. I did. A lot of I fathers, do. A lot of fathers can't even look at their sons and say that, but you always did. I still do. When he was growing up, you always made sure he had clothes on his back. Yes, sir. Get food to eat. Yes, sir. You always make sure you went to school. Yes, sir. You took the care of whatever was going on in your life. You got him there on time. Yes, sir. You made sure he did well, and he did do well. I didn't have to help him with that part. <laughs> he had that pretty much down. He had a gift. He did. He does. Or he did. He wanted to do. And although you had work, he had school, you spent as much time as you could with him. Yeah, like any father, you think you always spend a little more, but yeah, I did. You were involved in any activities he was involved in? Uh, yes, I tried. Some things I, was, I couldn't keep up with. The special events, you made your best effort to be there. I did. So for whatever things were going on in that world, Tim Jones Jr. had a father that loved him and he knew it. Well, that was always a problem with Timmy. He always didn't know it. Not, you know, he didn't think I loved him. Still, I don't even know if this is going to prove it to him. But yes, I mean, I, yeah, yeah, no, no. He didn't always reciprocate that love with you, did he? Well, again, he just. He just seemed like he didn't believe me, you know. I mean, when he got a little older, I mean, when he was younger, of course, all, you know, all little five, six, seven-year-old kids love you to death. But as he got older, you know, he just felt that I didn't love him. This issue with your ex-wife, Cindy, who we just saw a picture of. Yes. Did you ever tell your son when he was a little child that his mama made him? No. Did you ever say your mama doesn't love you? No. That would be cool, wouldn't it? It would be. 
Did you assure him you weren't going anywhere? Yes. Did you let him know his mom was sick? I did when he was older. In the beginning, I didn't, I didn't say, I mean, I told him, you know, your mom's not here. You know, you like you really no, no, no. He got older, he started to challenge you more. Teenager. <laughs> You've described, I think, you testified last time, sometimes dealing with him when he got older, it's like walking on eggshells. Yes. Any little thing could set him off. Yes. He'd go to his room or he'd walk away and he wouldn't talk to him. Yeah, at times, yes. He'd punish him. Pardon? He'd punish him. I guess you could sort of look at it that way. I mean, I thought I was punishing him or something, you know, but, yeah. You know. Your babies, grandbabies. Yep. You said over and over how much you meant to you. More than anything. I don't think anybody's going to question you. Pardon? I don't think anybody's going to question you. <laughs> I hope not. You drove all the way from your home down to Smith County. Marty Patterson and those other officers find your baby. Yes. And I believe you told us when you found out your son and those kids were missing, your first thought was to me just drug them off the cliff. Well, that was later. My initial thought was that he'd got back together with Amber, and it's like, well, that's, that's fine. I mean, <laughs> that's what I really thought. But then when I realized what was going on, yes. When I talked to Amber and that wasn't the case, and you know, I, I just thought that he lost it. Last saw on Christmas Eve, twenty twelve. Yes, sir. <coughs> that was the evening your son, Tim June. Yeah, twenty fourteen. It's twenty twelve. No, 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 twenty. Oh yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah, okay, okay, no, I forgot. I'm bad with dates too. I gotta write. December of 2012, Christmas Eve. Yep. He got upset with Jackie, your, your daughter. Stepdaughter. Well, he's been upset all weekend, so. I think he said he was uh, ticked off at women. I, it's the way I took it. He was just upset because he wasn't with his wife and family. I mean, he was with his kids, but he missed Amber and he didn't have her and it upset him, yeah. And I can understand that because I went to a divorce, so I, I know how he felt. Jackie, and he even started picking on Julie. Got her involved in it. Well, he he didn't. He tried to pick on Julie, of course, he didn't. But yeah, he was he was just nitpicking at Jackie, just you know, bugging her, pestering her. Yeah. You intervened. Yes. He got upset. He did. Christmas Eve, 2012. Always got upset. It looked like you were taking someone else's side other than his. I mean. I guess you could look that way, yeah. Going all the way back when you got remarried and married as a Carol? Yes. He got upset as a, as a child. He got jealous. You, you picked a woman over him. That's the way he took it, yes. And that stayed with him. Yeah, I believe. For, for a while. married Julie. It's like, even though he's older. Now, he helped you find Julie, but there were times... Well, if he got mad, if he got mad at me, he got mad at the world. I mean, that's what it was. On December twelfth, uh, December of two thousand twelve, he packed his kids up, came back to South Carolina. Yes, sir. And it was a year and eight months before y'all talked to one another. All of yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever it is up to Labor Day. All of twenty thirteen, there wasn't a single phone call. Well, but I knew what was going on because he was talking to my parents. Right. So I tried, I kept tabs on him that way. All the way into August of 2014, finally, you picked up the phone and you made contact. Because of my father. You made plans to see him and the kids on Labor Day. Yes. Obviously, your son. 
They did. Yes. They, they loved you and they were happy being with you. Yes. You made sure he knew that. Well, I knew that. My family knows that. I just don't know that Timmy knew that. I mean, again, he thought that I chose everyone over him, or, you know, over him and his children. And that's the way he just sort of looked at it. That's the way I always took it anyway. On this one night in August. <clears throat> He made a choice to take away all those babies from everybody, including you. Yes. To save himself. I don't know about that. I mean, to me, he's, I said before, man, he's, you know, he rides a fine line. He's a brilliant young man, and, and those guys, you know, he snaps. I don't know what caused it, but he snaps. Yep. That's right. Yeah, I blame myself more than him. I know you did, but you know he's the one. I know if I'd have been there, maybe this wouldn't happen. But like a lot of people say, but he didn't want you there. I don't. I don't no, actually, he did want me there. That you know. So, not, that's not true. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ever reach out to you as being a victim in this case? No, sir. I'm going to object. I'm going to object. I've already gone through this. All his testimony was Slister has been to his house. That's different than being reached out to as a victim by the victim. Slister himself went to his house. I mean, you can ask the question. Go ahead. I mean, let Slister redirect, read. Free cross. Go ahead. Did the sister's office reach out to you as a victim in this case? No. Did they reach out to you to gather information about your family? I would think oh. so. Um, yeah, I mean, we talked about what was happening. Did you help them? I told them anything I could, you know, that they asked. That's helping. You answered every question that they had? Yes. Do you love Tim? More than anything. Ever at any time, everybody in my office treats you with any kind of disrespect. No, sir. You came to my office and you allow me to come to your office. Yes, sir. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Hill. 